Morgan. Okay, ready for the prayer? <laughs> All right, let's do it. So just inviting you to place your hands on your heart or bringing them into prayer mudra, whatever feels comfortable as we breathe here, anchoring into this moment, this holy instant. So grateful and thankful to be the two or more gathered in the name of love. So grateful for the power of this joining as one mind, one heart, leaving all separate identities behind and in this moment, partnering up with our I am presence, putting Holy Spirit in charge, declaring our willingness and our intention to be fully present, to be open-hearted and open-minded for whatever message Spirit has for us today. We welcome and receive it with humility and grace, with gratitude. Blessing Jennifer and Andrea, Andrea, as they bring forth the message and the music today, making themselves available as a conduit for spirit and love to flow through them. We're grateful for their willingness and their service to this ministry. We declare this time together is truly helpful, is healing, expansive, clarifying, powerful, and that the blessings and the benefits received here today ripple out throughout all directions of time and space, blessing all of life. We claim that, we celebrate that, we receive it, we allow it, and so it is. Amen. And so it is. Amen. Thank you so much, Morgan. That was beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, and uh, I am grateful here to have you anchoring us. It's so funny. You're there what, what's the temperature there morgan well they do celsius here but i would say it's probably around 85 degrees fahrenheit yeah, yeah. it was actually cooler this morning though it's quite cool for the tropics <laughs> but totally different from what you all are experiencing in the in north america totally yes totally different it's a <laughs> nice balmy it's actually not that cold here it's only 25 and um <laughs> which is not bad yeah but uh uh yeah it's a totally different world here i love it that we get to join together and yeah. andrea and billy there are joining us from uh california and uh it's my pleasure to introduce them uh they are dear friends that i've known for decades and Andrea Lane is a singer songwriter. For sure, she is a multi dimensional artist who tours with her husband there, Billy Shank. They have been here many times and we just love it. They rock it out for us. And together, their songs represent freedom and transformation, which is what we're about. Billy is also a featured speaker and an award winning author. Andrea's sound is like Lady Gaga meets John Lennon for tea on a spiritual retreat. And as a socially conscious artist, Andrea is currently recording her new song, Reparations, and it will be out on February. Oh, just. Uh, couple of weeks from now, uh, February 2nd, and you can go to andrealane.org for more info. And so we rock, and so it is. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Andrea. Thank you so much. We're so grateful to be here again with you guys. We love this community. <laughs> we love you, Reverend Jennifer, Faith. Arthur, everyone, Morgan, everyone. 
is called I'm Free. Free from all that stuff, right? Here we go. I am an opening for love. The only thing that sets me free. I am an opening for love. Love I am, love is me. Hey, I'm free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a place, it's where I go. Land of love, a land of hope. Where grace and harmony reside. It's where I live, it's where I thrive. Hey, I'm free. Yeah, yeah. She loves me, I know he protects me, I know she prepares me to do the things I came here to do. So, oh, 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 I choose to love, I choose to grow. Hey, I'm free. That part. Yes, our freedom song, our freedom song. I love it. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Billy. Oh, let's see. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd like that. <laughs> New effects that uh, we can activate on uh, Zoom. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's interesting. I just got home, back home. Oops. Sorry, I did the wrong thing. Um, what am I doing? That's, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take a breath here because I just got home. Uh, I, I've been gone for weeks and I literally just got home, took a few things out of the car, ran Bodhi around the house and sat down here and turned on the heat a little bit, get the house heated up a little bit. And uh, I, the last hour or so of the drive, it was it was uh, snowing pretty hard, uh, very mountainous roads, <clears throat> driving very slowly, carefully, and um, so that was uh, a bit intense. So I I'd always feel safe pretty much, so not bad. And I just had a lovely couple days with my dear friends Lisa Natoli and Bill Free at their house. Uh, 
on my way back from my family's house in Maine, stopped at their house on the New Hampshire border. And we just talked and talked and talked about God as we are often want to do. And it's, uh, it's my favorite topic as you well know. I enjoy the God conversation immensely. I never get bored, never get tired of it. I find it always helpful, always expansive and healing. And one of the things we were talking about is Bill is very much in immersing himself in the non-dual world these days. He's getting ready to go to India for a number of things that he's doing there. And so we were talking about, of course, miracles and non-duality and uh, our love of A Course Miracles and how it helps us by pointing the way. And I was saying, as you may have heard me say before, that I feel like we can take any one of the lessons or any one of the teachings in A Course in Miracles and really work it. And that one principle will take us all the way home. It really will. And so uh, I was saying to Bill and Lisa last night after dinner that for me, I did that with uh, Lesson 68, Love Holds No Grievances. And uh, that I cannot hold a grievance and know myself was for me the lesson that I just kept working day after day after day for a few years. And it really sorted out my mind because it required me to do all the forgiveness work and to learn how to truly forgive, which of course now is one of the main things that I teach how to forgive, which is the releasing of the attachment to our interpretations, the meaning we made of things, our perceptions, our projections, really letting go of our attachments to those beliefs. That is the true forgiveness work that we can do. And as A Course Miracles says, forgiveness offers everything we want, everything we need. And for me, it certainly has offered everything I desired, which is surprising to me even now. It's surprising to me how profoundly effective forgiveness is. And of course, now, after all these years, I know it just not, not just for myself, but for thousands of people that I've had an opportunity to connect with and work with and know and have conversations with about their own healing experiences. And in fact, uh, Andrea was in the fir very first Masterful Living in 2009, right? We're doing the 16th year this year. And Faith was also in that first year, 2009, they both were. And so uh, there are many of us here that I see that can tell you that forgiveness offers everything that we want or need, because what it does is it is that release of the blocks to love. And when we let go of the blocks to love, we remember who we are. And um, one of the things that when I stay at Bill and Lisa's house, um, uh, Lisa likes to go take a bath around nine o'clock at night and then go to bed. And Bill and I will sit up and talk for a couple more hours. And last night we were talking about how you get glimpses glimpses of the truth glimpses of your true identity and i was sharing that um i for me when i uh, when i turned 40 got into my 40s i started to feel this deep sense of liberation and it was because of the forgiveness work i was doing and the more I amplified that, the better I felt all the time. And then is turning 50 felt so much better than turning 40. And I just feel more 
at home, more happy, more at peace, more of a sense of vitality and tuned in uh, with every passing day. And I was saying to Bill, you know, there are so many people on this planet who, as they get older, they feel worse, right? They feel worse. But knowing some of you as I do, we really can feel so much better as we travel this road. And it doesn't have anything to do with aging. It has to do with clearing clearing our attachments to, uh, I love Buddhists use the word obscurations, those things that obscure our view. And so Course Miracles talks about seeing with divine vision, seeing with a true vision, with the Holy Spirit's vision. And that is God's will for us. And A Course in Miracles also tells us that God's will for us is God's will in us. It is our will because there's no separation. There's no separate will. So the, the will of God is our will. But we must remember that we are not our personality. We are not our body. So the personality can certainly appear to have a separate will, but we are not our personalities. We are not our bodies. We have a body to care for, and we have a personality to bring to the light. Right? And the obscurations, the blocks to love, the things that obscure the view are the things that we get to clear away by simply no longer being truly interested in them, but instead being interested in the truth. And, uh, in, in the course, Jesus tells us that we're far too tolerant of mind wandering and we don't value the truth enough. The truth sets us free. And what's wonderful about the truth setting us free is it's not a process. When the truth sets us free from our false beliefs, our attachments, our belief in lack and limitation, our belief in guilt and shame and blame and regret and resentment and jealousy and hurt, etc. That when the truth sets us free, it's not a process. And that is very valuable to me because as a spiritual student now for literally almost four decades, uh, I often feel like a slow learner. I've been at this so long, but um, but I feel like I'm. I reached. I I know I reached a tipping point, and now I'm on the other side, which I'm very very grateful for, and I feel so blessed to be able to support other people who. When I get to that tipping point and the tipping point is really when your thoughts are 51% loving. That's the tipping point. When your thoughts get to 51% loving, then life becomes much easier, much, much easier. When we're still clinging to unloving thoughts and our thoughts are mostly unloving, life is much, much harder. And it's not the circumstances that make it difficult. It's our view of life, a view of ourselves. Later this year, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a three-month course called Change Your Mind About Yourself. Last year, I did Change Your Mind About Your Body. And this year, Spirit is telling me, change your mind about yourself. <laughs> so um yes so what a course of miracles is extremely clear about is the fastest way to change your mind about yourself is to let go of your grievances love holds no grievances and those who hold on to grievances will forget who they are 
because they're more interested in their grievances. And those who let go of their grievances, those who practice forgiveness, will remember who they are. And it's certain that they will. And that is the truth setting us free. I love that the truth setting us free is not a process. Now, I've never heard anybody say that it's not a process, but I can say with absolute clarity and knowing it is not a process. And it there's often this confusion when we're identified with the personality and identified with the body that we think that healing is a process. So what happens is, let's say I cut my hand, I burn my hand, it's going to be a process that takes time for the cut to heal, for the burn to heal. But the only reason that it takes time is because of our mind holding grievances and grudges and guilt and blame and shame. Truly, I I feel absolutely certain, I have a deep knowing that healing does not take time, not even physical healing. And here's why. I have known many people, even people I've prayed for, who have had instantaneous healings, instantaneous, instantaneous healings of things in the body. And so even though it was something that was happening that could be physically observed, seen on x-rays, that just disappears, they can't find it anymore. The doctors can't find it anymore. It was there yesterday. Today we're getting ready to do the surgery. It's not there. Things like that. When things like that occur, that's when you know, if you're willing, you can be reminded that healing does not take time. Because if healing took time, it would mean that time had some kind of power. <clears throat> now time, we as spiritual students, we can say time is an illusion, but most of us don't experience time as an illusion. We experience time as a construct that we feel trapped in at times, right? We feel limited by time, but only because we agree to it, only because we agree to it. And this year, 2024, in our Masterful Living program, we are going to kick out the doors I really feel we are being called to do that. I, I've talked about this before. Numerologically, this year is an eight, right? 2024, you add up the numbers, you get an eight. It's an eight. So eight represents strength and prosperity. There's no greater prosperity than remembering your true identity. And when you're willing to remember your true identity and live from your true identity, then everything painful can fall away easily and gracefully. And it doesn't require a process. It doesn't require time. Because process, uh, by its very nature, indicates that it will take time. It, there's going to be something that has to be gone through and in time and space. And I love the teachings of Ernest Holmes. I was talking about this last night over dinner with Bill and Lisa. Because Bill came to um, New Thought teachings, of course, Miracles teachings from um, a very... Uh, born again Christian kind of a, a mindset. And Lisa came to A Course in Miracles um, without that kind of religious training. But it, it, uh, I came to A Course in Miracles after 
having become a science of mind minister and practitioner and studying the new thought teachings of not just Ernest Holmes, but uh, Phineas Quimby and Joel Goldsmith and Emma Curtis Hopkins and other great mystics and truth is truth. And so I, um, we were talking about different people's misinterpretations of A Course in Miracles. And I was surprised to learn some of the misinterpretations that people have because uh, they never occurred to me, never occurred to me. And, but I could see how they could occur. And uh, Ernest Holmes, one of, and I've said this so many times, one of my favorite things he said was healing does not take time. The only time that it, the only amount of time that it takes to have a healing is the amount of time that it takes to have a realization of truth. And this is what Bill and I were talking about late last night, that a realization of truth is one of those glimpses where you you connect to the truth. Now, the truth is it's part of our nature. It's part of our identity, really, uh, because the absolute, the infinite divine love, intelligence, God, whatever we'd like, whatever name we'd like to give it um, in non-duality, they call it um, awareness or consciousness. Now, in A Course in Miracles, we wouldn't use those words to talk about the infinite, but a realization of our divine nature, a realization of the truth, what it does is it activates our remembrance of who we are, what we are, and what our life is for, what, what our true nature is. It reminds us that this is an illusion. It's a projection of the mind. And there is a powerful healing that takes place when we have those realizations of truth that are nothing I mean, they are just not anything to compare to uh, when you're reading something in a book and you read the truth, right? I'm one with the infinite. You read that, but it doesn't, it doesn't bring a realization. The thing that brings a realization is willingness. Reading books, studying books, collecting spiritual information will never ever be healing because it's usually an egoic pursuit. And it's a trick of the ego to study and study and study. We all know people who have studied spiritual truths for a very long time and their, their mind is stuffed with truth, but they are not living the truth. They don't actually believe it. They just think they believe it, but they don't know it. They don't know it. It's just like they, they could recite poetry or any other thing that they could recite, but it is not the living truth in their own mind. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, realizations of truth tell us who we are, what we are, what we are for, what we are capable of. It reminds us, it wakes us up. Did anybody see the movie Barbie? A lot of you did, yeah. So I, I just saw it the other day and Lisa and Bill and I were talking about Barbie yesterday too. Because if you haven't seen it, you know, um, I think I think it was really brilliant and beautiful. I really appreciated it very much. And, you know, it's not the kind of movie like E.T. or um, The Color Purple or um, some deeply moving where you feel connected to the characters in ways like that, because it's Barbie and Ken. It's very cartoonish in that way, but it's very clever, very um, well made, it's, it's fun. And one of the components of the story is that 
the women, the Barbies, they become hypnotized. They become hypnotized uh, and they forget who they are. You see, Holy Spirit's always talking with us all the time. So, and you see this theme in so many things. You see it in the Wizard of Oz. You see it in so many fairy tales. You see it in um, the Matrix. It, you know, people forget who they are. And they are stories about waking up. And so in the movie Barbie, what happens is some of the characters are awake and they realize, oh, the other Barbies, the Barbies have fallen asleep. They've forgotten who they are. They've forgotten that they're the president of Barbie world and that, that they're a, um, a scientist or a doctor or all these things. They've forgotten and they've fallen into this um, uh, servant servantile they're serving the kens and they're they've forgotten that they're powerful beings and so the way they wake them up is they tell them the truth the way they wake them up is they tell them the truth and so they're telling the 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 barbies who've been kind of hypnotized that they're in the the barbie is listening and listening and then all of a sudden they go I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. What am I doing in a maid's costume serving beer to the Kents? You know, I'm a doctor. And so um, the same is true for us. The same is true for us. And what Bill and I were talking about in these glimpses, uh, he, he was saying these glimpses are so powerful because they once we experience these glimpses we'd like more of that and more of that and i was saying they are magnetic and they draw us think of those old cartoons where like looney tunes where somebody puts a pie in a windowsill and the smells of the pie go wafting and then somebody walking down the street smells the pie and then they're magnetically drawn like they're lifted up off the ground and drawn and compelled to eat the pie right it's like that when we have glimpses of truth it's like that we feel compelled we feel magnetically drawn to remember our true identity and as we were talking about it i said to bill i said it is the kiss that awakens so there's the, like, think of Sleeping Beauty, think of Snow White, right? So Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, they are, they're, they're, they've forgotten who they are, they're asleep, they're in a coma, right? Again, more representation of all of us and love's kiss awakens them so that they can then help everybody in the community wake up and save everyone, right? So, but they have to join together in that kiss, love's kiss. I, I love all these different things that we see all, that the Holy Spirit is just speaking to us all the time, all the time, all the time, in and through everything. And so it's our willingness to wake up. It's our willingness to, value the truth and to say, I would like to have a realization of truth today. That's all. I'm willing to have a realization of truth today. I'm willing to wake up. And sometimes we have understandably a deep, deep fear of waking up because we think if we wake up that we are going to feel called to do something like go live in a nunnery or a monastery. But those, those are old egoic fears. They are not the truth. Um, I, I actually have known uh, a number of people who have become nuns or monks and things like that. But uh, I didn't know them before. I've only known them as nuns or monks. 
And uh, I don't know that they're waking up actually. I mean, I think they're living beautiful, devoted lives, but I'm not sure they're waking up. But I do know many people who are not monks and nuns and priests who are waking up. I do. I know many. And so there are illusions and delusions that if we are going to wake up, we have to give up enjoying a glass of wine, or we have to give up enjoying going on vacation, or we have to give up enjoying sex, or we have to give up enjoying food, and et cetera, et cetera. But there's no part of life that we have to give up in order to live in our true identity. I, I, I mean, now, Jesus did say to the young rich man who came to him and said, dude, you are awesome. I want to go with you. I'd like to be one of your, your tribe here. I want to go with you and the apostles. I think what you're doing is so awesome, right? And Jesus said, great, you are welcome to join us. Take everything you have, give it to the poor, and we'll meet you at the tavern later. And you just know that that young man said, that is great. Now, let's just think about this for a minute. I could definitely give everything I have to the poor or just hear me out now, Jesus, hear me out. Instead of giving everything to the poor, I could give some things to the poor. I could keep the rest. And I could pay for us to stay in nice inns, to have great camels and uh, mules and good food all along the way. And I, we can help more poor people along the way. We can get nice warm clothes for when we're in the cold nights of the desert. And just, you know, I'm just saying, maybe that could be better. And... I, I I always think Jesus would say, give everything you have to the poor and meet us later. And you just know that guy did not show up, right? And so that's why they say it's harder for a rich man to get into heaven than it is for a camel to go through the eye of the needle. So we get so distracted by the earthly life now but it doesn't have to be that way it does not have to be that way believe me there are many 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 stories of buddhist lamas and uh gurus who have been given so much wealth to support what they are doing and building their their ministries, monasteries, ashrams, etc. But they are not taking that wealth and distracting themselves with it. And money can be a distraction, but it doesn't have to. It can actually be helpful in not being distracted. Everything in the world is neutral. We've given everything on this street, in this room, on our body, all the meaning that it has for us. Valuing the truth instead of all the things of this world, that is the path of liberation. And from my personal experience and watching friends like Bill and Lisa, what I see is that Life becomes more comfortable, it becomes easier, it becomes less distracted, and there's enough. And But we are not after acquiring wealth. We're, our focus is the healing of our mind and sharing that healing, extending that healing. But our needs are being met by the infinite by divine love intelligence. 
and we are doing as we are guided to do, which takes a high level of trust and developing the capacity for that high level of trust can be a difficult experience. It can be challenging. In the Manual for Teachers Development of Trust in chapter four talks about, it doesn't have to be difficult, but it usually is. Because we have to give up valuing the things that aren't valuable and valuing the things that are valuable. So first we have to learn the difference in what those things are. And realizations of truth are the most valuable because they shatter our attachments to the false. That's what realizations of truth do. That's why they are instantly healing. They break our attachments to the false, to the false idols, to the false beliefs. And so having a prayer every day that we're anchoring ourselves in, I'm willing to know the truth. I'm willing to value the truth. I'm willing to live the truth. I'm willing to talk the truth. For me, one of the things I started to do many years ago was pray that I would only speak the truth because I'm speaking to people all the time. People are listening. So I'm only interested in speaking the truth. So if I believe something that's false, I do not wish to communicate that to somebody else. I'm only interested in sharing the truth, communicating the truth, living the truth. And so it's been a wonderful prayer for me and it's really helped me to heal my mental attachments to false idols, to false beliefs. So being willing to remember the truth, being willing to only focus on the truth is a deeply healing path. And there can be the perception that that would be painful, but it is the absolute opposite of painful. Living in the false is painful. It never feels comfortable, ever. But living in the truth always feels comfortable, even when things are difficult. So for me, like driving here when the I was uh, getting snow squall warnings on my phone and I'm going up the mountain, over the mountain, down the mountain and uh, driving 15 miles an hour, et cetera. I felt safe and secure. I didn't have one thought that I wouldn't be here on time. Everything worked out perfectly. And I wasn't afraid. I wasn't worried. Until you really start to experience that, you have no idea how powerfully valuable that is. Because for me, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine how great it could feel. I couldn't imagine it because I had never felt it. I had never felt it. I, I didn't feel it when, when I was a child. I didn't feel a great sense of peace when I was a child. I never have felt it until this time in my life. And now I would not trade it for anything, not for anything, for no, no health, no money. If I had to make a deal, no thing I would ever trade, knowing of the truth and the peace that it brings. So to me, here we are in this brand new year, uh, this eight year of strength and prosperity. There's no greater prosperity than waking up. There's no greater prosperity than knowing the truth. So let's be willing to have realizations of truth every day, all day long. And when we are really willing, then what happens is those ahas stick. They don't, we don't forget them. They stick. And that's a wonderful feeling when you start to realize all my ahas are sticky. They are, I am not forgetting them. 
Because I used to have ahas all the time and forget them. Anybody else relate to that? Yeah, right? I think we all have that experience until we don't anymore. And so when we stop forgetting our ahas, it's simply an indication that we have crossed into that place of we value the truth more than our false beliefs and our false idols. I'm going to invite you to place your hands on your heart. Take a deep breath with me. And just notice, how does it feel to think about valuing the truth more than anything else? How does it feel? What comes up when we think about living in the truth, letting go of the false, false beliefs, false idols, special relationships, letting everything that doesn't serve our life of love gently, easily, gracefully dissolve and resolve permanently back to the nothingness from which it arose. How does it feel to think about opening our mind to the truth and valuing the truth above all else? Because any fears that come up are coming up for healing. So let's just allow any fears or resistance or reluctance, whatever it is that feels uncomfortable, we're just bringing it to the light right now. We're offering up anything that could stand in the way of our willingness to remember the truth, our willingness to have realizations of truth. We are willing to give up the idea that healing is a process or that it has to be a process, that it has to be difficult, or that we have to somehow memorize scripture in order to have ahas and miracles. We're letting go of all these false ideas and allowing ourselves to simply notice and feel what's going on when we consider putting our attention on remembering the truth, valuing the truth, living from the truth. And as you contemplate this, I'm going to invite Andrea and Billy back to give us a song here. So we're just deeply breathing and opening ourselves to realizations of truth right here, right now. Mm -hmm. This time, God is using Surrounded 
by a thousand angels. And can I not feel all of this love? I just trust. I just trust. Just trust. Just trust. Stepping out on the skinny branch And it's getting easier yeah. Stepping out on faith Just trust Just trust Just So beautiful, so beautiful. I don't think I've heard that song before, Andrea. <laughs> nice, beautiful. Thank you so much. All right, so we're going to do that thing we do now. We're going to go into breakouts, uh, short breakout, so that you can share what came for forward for you in that meditation time and uh, so you won't have a lot of time to share if everybody in your group can just go around and share uh something meaningful and maybe a decision that you're making about how you'd like to do things differently uh, how you'd like to live at this time opening your heart opening your mind to a new experience of the truth so I'm going to open these rooms here and I am going to Oops. Let's see. Morgan, I am inviting you to see if you would have anything you'd like to share. Um, let's see, sorry, I was clearing the breakout invitation off my screen. Sure, that was um, a powerful packed message, lots of good stuff in there. Um, one thing that I love is the part of that, that you said the only reason that healing seems to take time is because of our thoughts and the thoughts that we're believing about what's possible for us. And um, quantum physics, I feel like confirms this because I read sometime, I'm not going to explain this perfectly, but they examined the motion of a ball through space and it didn't move in fluid motion like they imagined that it would, but it like disintegrated and recreated itself in each micro instant along the way. And that's what we're constantly doing with our thoughts. We're regenerating our experience in this world, whether that be healthy cells in our body or cancerous cells in our body. In each instant, we have a new opportunity to create whichever reality we want to give our allegiance to. So I love that science is starting more and more to validate these ancient truths. Ancient, that's a, that's a word of time. So I guess these eternal truths. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for that. Andrea, how about you? And Billy too, of course. Anything you'd like to share? Um, well, sometimes I get overwhelmed in realizing that every single thought 
matters and sometimes I get anxious about it and I think it's I want to be there and I think for me I have to be willing to be there is this making sense yes <laughs> okay because I I love the truth and I want to live the truth and but sometimes I don't know if I'm living it <laughs> or or I fall off the path so many times do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. This, this, I don't want this to sound negative, but, but I think that I've been releasing a lot of stuff and I think I'm ready for like a new level mm -hmm. of being and living in the truth. And maybe that's why uh, all this stuff is, has come up and I've had like challenges with my family and I'm just like, wow. But anyway, I feel like I'm up leveling and I want it to be freaking instantaneous. <laughs> instantaneous, that's what I want. I want that instant healing and I don't always know if I have that. And I mean, it's, it's there. I'm willing to know that it's there. That's what, does, is this resonating at all or? Yes. Yeah. That willingness is so life-changing and key. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, I, I kind of think of it almost from the other way. It's like, to me, healing is just release. It's release from whatever I've been experiencing. But I think when we get sick, we get injured, we have these kind of things, it's because of the vibration that we've drawn. We've been, we've been souped in a vibration that is now bringing a physical manifestation to it. It's kind of like if I'm really worried, the physical manifestation will be an ulcer, or it'll be a heart attack, or it'll be something. Um, and like when you say to release the resentment, to release the hate, to release the anger, that's coming at it the same way but from the back door because i would say releasing is great but i want to focus on feeling love i want to focus on being appreciative i want to focus on being happy and joyful and free and not i it's it's important and i know that's the way a lot of people have to go you have to let go of this but what is it being replaced with? It needs to be replaced with love and joy and beauty and happiness and goodness. And then as I draw that stuff to me, as the vibration draws it to me, I will naturally um, feel relief from the sicknesses that I've had or the injuries that I've had or whatever, because I, it's, it, I believe it to be a, a truth that I draw unto me whatever I get. You know? And so I got to take responsibility for that. And somewhere down the line, I need to at least, if I'm starting to feel kind of crappy, I need to change my thought process and look at something that makes me happier or makes yes. me happier and, and just get out of that political nonsense or whatever, you know, because um, again, we I draw to me what I'm putting out there. I'm just a radio station and it's coming back to me. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, um, if that makes any sense. <laughs> oh, it makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And, you know, when we release that attachment too, then love is all there is. Love is what we are. Yes. And so it's doing both. I think it's, it's releasing the attachments to the false and valuing the love that is the truth and looking for it and feeding that, you know, the story of the two wolves, right? The, yeah, which wolf are you going to feed, right? Mm -hmm. Feed the love wolf, yeah. Faith. Hi, Jennifer. Wow, so many great things to share. And I, I don't know how much time we have, but... Um, Five minutes. Okay, great. And what a great talk. Super, super great talk. So I was um, 
you know, I was working with someone the other day, uh, a client who was very nervous giving presentations um, in his companies in financial world, and he has to give presentation to that, and he had a panic attack a couple of years ago, and um, so I was working with his body, and we were like, like saying, now, I want you to experience what it's like to be ignored, because he says he was feeling people were ignoring him when he was doing the, the presentation. I said, just watch it, What? just watch him like you're observing it, and that's what that and then experience that. And he did. And I said, now I want you to let yourself feel being ignored. And immediately it shifted. I said, that's where you can change that feeling of being ignored. Mm. And what you are putting on that, whatever you decide you want that to mean. And so it was a revelation for him because he was like, oh, if I'm seeing it or experiencing it, then. And then I'm, then he takes it on inside like we do. Someone ignores us. Someone cuts us off on the uh, freeway. So our friend doesn't call us back, whatever. I mean, we all experience that. Um, I know that I, that happens to me. And um, I can then choose how I want to feel. But if I'm not aware of the feeling, it's really hard to understand why I just feel bad. So what is it? What's going on here? Well, the thought creates the feeling creates the energy in the body, creates the shutdown. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to, if I had just a second, it was about, Andrea Song was talking about stepping out in faith. And um, when I loved it, that was so great. And uh, a couple of years ago, I was going up to San Francisco to get on a flight. And I was the more, I had a morning flight and I'm, um, just got out of the shower, my hair is all wet, you know, it was just a day thing. So it wasn't a big packing thing. Uh, I get a thing, I get a next a notice on my phone that says, this is 8.30 in the morning, my flight is going to be um, be um, boarding in one hour, right? Now, I it was 7.30, I had wet hair, I had made a mistake, I thought it was two hours later, the flight was leaving two hours later. So now here I am in Los Angeles. I have to get to the airport, but I have to get to get my car parked so I can get a shuttle to get to the airport, get through the, the T, TSA to get on the flight. I had one hour. So I instantaneously gave it over to spirit. I did not allow myself in any moment to think that it would not work out. Mm. Why? Because I needed a miracle. <laughs> So it's so interesting that I was able to totally trust in that moment because I needed a miracle. So I can say that same thing and you know, whenever, wherever I want a miracle, it doesn't have to get to the airport. You know, I want a different relationship with someone. Well, I want that miracle. I want to totally trust that that miracle is available to me right now. And I can, I can access that by being in love, being in total trust, being in total faith that all is well. But that was time bending. You know, we talk about that yeah. like, total time bending. I mean, yeah. it, everyone else would have said that would be impossible. Right. Yeah. I mean, I get to this, the place for the shuttle, uh, park my car, the shuttle comes right away. Usually you have to wait 15, 20 minutes for that shuttle. You know, it's right there. I get to the airport, go right through TSA, like amazingly. It was the most like so fast. Crazy. That's <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. I love those kinds of demonstrations. And then uh, praying for my stepfather who had a heart blockage. Um, he was supposed to get a heart, uh, something, uh, some heart surgery, but they said five days before the surgery that he went in, they said, oh, we need to address this. You have heart blockage before you can have your surgery. We got to fix this first. We set to pray and put him on the prayer list at Agape. My mom had nuns praying for him at the Catholic Church. We're all praying. Five days later, he goes in and the doctor says, I cannot explain this. There is no blockage. Yeah. Wow. Mm hmm Instantaneous. We wanted a miracle. So we were willing to willing to accept yeah. that miracle. That's it. The, the, the willingness is the key. You know, and I, I just said something that's really willing to accept the miracle, right? We pray for it, and sometimes we don't, like, accept it. Like, I'm accepting this miracle in my life. This relationship can change. This, you know, my body can heal. 
That's right. That's right. Because we think we want things that we don't actually want. Mm. Because nothing is being withheld from us. Right? I'm not a victim of the world. I see nothing is being withheld from us. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Everything works together for our good. So accepting that, that that's a challenge. It's a challenge to accept that we are loved, that we are lovable, and that we are powerful, powerful beings. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody's coming back from the breakout. Thank you, Morgan and Faith and Andrea and Billy for your shares. Much appreciated. And let's see here. Give me just a moment. Um, okay. So move this out of the way here. How was the breakout? Was it good, helpful, inspired? <clears throat> Please share any breakthroughs, anything you'd like us to hold in prayer, uh, and anything uh, that you, the truth that you now see that maybe you didn't see before. I invite you to share that in the chat and let's all hold it together. I think that's so powerful. And I always like to know your your insights, your ahas, your breakthroughs, even your breakdowns. Um, I was gonna share something. Oh, it just slipped out of my mind. I, I'd like for it to come back. So I think it was beautiful. Um, okay, yes. So, um, I'll just tell this little story about shifting and and being willing. So uh, last spring, I when I was visiting, I think it was last spring or maybe it was a year ago, some sometime uh, uh, six or eight months ago, I was visiting Lisa and Bill and I took my dog Bodhi for a walk down this street that they're on a corner down this street that has a cul-de-sac and uh, these beautiful, nice, expensive houses there and woods. And so it's a lovely area that they live in. And I was walking Bodhi and somebody had a small dog, like a Shih Tzu or something that came out from the yard as we walked by and it was following me and Bodhi. So we slowed down. I didn't see any person around. And um, the two dogs were kind of playing together a little bit. And, and the dog was there for a while with us. And then I started moving down the street and I thought, well, we're just gonna go down and come back so we can drop this little dog off when we come back this way. Uh, and, that sometimes happens here in our neighborhood that a dog will run out and join us and and uh, walk along with us and then go back home when we pass their house again. So this was happening. And then I saw this um, man, big, tall man, uh, come uh, and I knew right away, oh, this is his little dog. And... Uh, he immediately was started uh, basically yelling at me, saying, this is private property. You have no right to be here. And I said, Pri what? I, did I didn't know that. And he said, yes, it's private property. You have no right to be here. You're illegally trespassing. I'm going to call the police. And I was like, what? I said, oh, I, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. We are just going for a walk here. And he said, who are you? What's your name? And um, so even though he was being very threatening with me, and he's literally a foot taller than me, I, I, I don't know. I just didn't feel threatened, really. Um, and so I told him my name. And I said, you know, 
let's call the police and let's just confirm that this street is, it is illegal for me to walk here. And he's like, go ahead, you call the police. I'm going to call the police. He was very threatening. And, um, and I, I was, I, I said something like, I, I don't understand why you're so angry or why you're so upset. Cause you have no right to be here. You have no right. And you know, who are you? Where did you come from? And I said, you know, I, I'm staying with Bill and Lisa who live just around the corner from you. And he's like, Oh, that guy, you know? <laughs> and, and then he was, and Bill has done all this beautiful landscaping right at the end of the street where his property is. And he said, that guy's making a mess of things over there, and which is the opposite of what's happening. And so I could see this guy was super agitated, just looking to for a fight. So I said, I'm, you know, so sorry we disturbed you. I'm really sorry. And thank you for letting me know about the laws here. And um, we left. And, uh, but he was super obnoxious about it. And I went home and I told Bill and Lisa, I went to their house and told Bill and Lisa, because I thought they would want to know, of course. And um, Bill said, it's not illegal to walk there. It's not private property. I mean, it's a private road. It's not a thoroughfare, but anybody could walk their dog there. It's not, not a problem at all. And uh, he said, that guy, he, he, can be obnoxious and um so i have thought about him many times in the last year or so since that exchange and prayed for him and um bill told me his wife was very sick that things were hard for them is what i got and so i i prayed for them many times whenever i would think of them spirit puts people's you know in my mind pray for them now pray for them now so i do and um last night i was walking bodhi just uh just as it was getting dark and we walked by that guy's house and I walked by it earlier in the day. I checked in with spirit. Can I walk there? Is it safe? Yes, it's safe. So we did. We walked there a few times. And then last night I was walking there and, and it was just dark and Bodhi's leash had a knot in it. It's a cloth leash. And where the knot was, it broke. And Bodhi took off after this other dog and was running all around their house, a different dog from that guy's dog, but his next door neighbor. And Bodhi went up on the porch and then I was able to catch her and retie the leash. And we, we were coming back out to the street and I saw this man coming our way with his dog. And I, I instantly thought, oh, it's him. And uh, my, I, I felt kind of like, uh, I didn't want to be attacked again. And it was dark. But we came out to the road where he was. And he said, oh, you have such a sweet dog. He started this conversation with me and we stood there and we talked for about 10 minutes. And it was as though he had never met me before. And he kept saying what a sweet dog Bodhi was and asking what her name was. And, and then he was saying um, uh, that he was having a challenge with something with this house he was building and how hard it was and um, it was just a disaster with all these storms. It was the foundation was filling with water. There's nothing he could do. It was all getting ruined. And then he was saying, and I have this tractor that was broken and, and he's going on and on and Bill fixes tractors. He refurbishes um, John Deere tractors. It's his hobby. 
he's really into it. It's funny, but he's really, really into it. And he, and I said, well, you know, Bill is into tractors and he was like, yeah, what's he doing with all those tractors there? I see how many tractors he has. And I said, you know, it's just a fun hobby for him. We, we were going on and on. And then somebody else came in their car and stopped and he joined the conversation and we're talking about tractors and dogs and Bill and, and all of this in a very pleasant conversation. And I, he asked me what my name was and I asked him what his name was. And it was literally as though we had never spoken before. And we finished our everything. Have a good night. Enjoy your walk. Yes. Enjoy your visit. What a beautiful dog again. And I went on my way. And as I turned away from him, I just said, thank you, God. 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 So, so grateful to just have that experience that things can be transformed. They can be made new. And I don't know if he remembered me and he was intentionally trying to like, let's start again, let's reboot this or not. It doesn't really matter, but I, I sure remembered him, but what was clear from our conversation was neither of us was holding anything to obscure the love. We could have a loving experience even though we don't know each other, even though we had a very, very unpleasant conversation a year ago, the, the, we could, there, the love was palpable there. And I got to go home to Bill and Lisa's house and tell them about this experience, which was really wonderful for them to now know that this man was having a different experience. And so I say all that to just really, if, if you have had t experiences with anybody in your life and they, that are unpleasant and they come into your mind while you're doing the laundry, you're taking a shower, you're cooking the dinner, you're walking the dog, you're standing in line. It comes into your mind, this unpleasant past experience. That is the Holy Spirit saying, give it up, allow the miracle. Give it up, allow the miracle. So whenever this gentleman would come into my mind, I would pray for him, bless him. And then spirit gave me this opportunity because the last two times I was there, I did not go down that street with Bodhi. But I, I got the clear message this weekend, go there, go there. So I did. And it's we think when these old unpleasant memories come into our mind that this is a bummer. Ah, I don't want to think about that, right? Ah, I don't want to think about that awful man and the things he said. I don't want to think about him. Ugh, what a jerk. Ugh, right? That's, that's the ego tendency. But when we're aligned with spirit, that experience comes into our mind. We know, oh, I can have a healing of this. I can, I can bless my brother. I, we can bring this to the light. This, this can occur. And that's the willingness. So I'm inviting you from this moment forward for the rest of your life, when you have a sour memory, come back into your awareness. Don't push it away. Say, oh, what is what am I to let go of here? What is the view? What is the belief? What is the thought that's like a splinter in my mind coming up for healing right now? What is it? Let me be willing. All right. So uh, let's uh, do a couple of quick announcements. And then uh, Andre and Billy are going to give us another song. 
Morgan's going to give us another prayer and we will go forward. So um, announcements, Masterful Living uh, registration is open. We start a week from tomorrow. And um, so Monday, I think it's the 22nd of January is the is the beginning. And it's also the closing of registration for Masterful Living for 2024. And um, also right now we have a, uh, so that's my year long program. If you like to do this work all year and experience transformation and healing, come and join us. Uh, it's going to be a rocking year. We are going to throw it down this year. We really are. <laughs> I'm just, I feel so on fire. And uh, also this year, one of the things I'm doing, it's called quantum counseling. So I've gathered together 17 Course in Miracles teachers, including myself, and we are giving uh, 18 classes on counseling from a Course in Miracles perspective. It's called quantum counseling. And it starts in early February. Right now, there is a, um, a major early bird special that's on right now. So that's quantum counseling. All right. I am going to turn it over to Andrea and Billy for their announcements. Um, wait. Announcements. Uh, well, I do have a new song coming out like you mentioned, February the 2nd. It's called Reparations, and the music video is really cool, all coming out on that day. Are you ready for a song? Oh, and Billy's book. That's right. Billy, Billy, has, oh. a, Billy has a new book called I'll Probably Go to Hell for This. <laughs> What's it's it about, Billy? On Amazon. What's it about? It is about, um, basically, it's about the Bible and what most people have never heard about it or know about it or even thought about it. It's like, who is this guy Abraham and why do the Hebrews think they own Palestine? Uh, who was Noah? Um, what's the thing about Jesus and where Christianity come from? And believe it or not, the Bible says nothing against homosexuality. Read it here. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Yeah, we're gonna go right into that song. Luna's coming to join. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I can't be bothered with sorrow, and I can't be bothered with hate. I'm using up my time by feeling fine every day. Don't 
down Don't let it turn you around and around and around <laughs> I can't be bothered with sorrow And I can't be bothered with hate I'm using up my time for feeling fine Every day I love that song. It's one of my favorites. I play it all the time. It's so great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we are going to have a prayer here. And uh, Morgan's going to pray us out. Okay. Thank you. What a fun Sundays with Spirit. <laughs> Thank you for that music, Andrea and Billy. That was amazing. Very uplifting and inspiring, as was your message, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. All right. So happy to be with all of you. Let's have a prayer. Yes, so grateful and thankful for this holy instant, this sacred container, grateful to acknowledge the mighty companions who are gathered here, right here, right now. Grateful and thankful for all of the support that is always available to us. Grateful for the reminder that we can see those little splinters in our minds differently. We can see those as a call for love and an invitation to pray and bless for other, bless others, pray for and bless others. Grateful to take all of the high vibration of love that we have conjured up here in this hour and take it out into the world as we go about the rest of our day to day, just intending to be the light, be the love, and carry this message without even having to say anything, just by shining that forth from our hearts and our minds as we choose to see with Christ vision and allow love to lead us. Grateful that our healing blesses the world, so we claim it now and we share it with everyone. We let it be, and so it is. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. God bless. God bless. God bless. Thank you, Arthur. Mm.